We never expected that accidental impact to happen. Which, I suppose, is what makes it an accident. With this one, though, the famous or possibly infamous human named Murphy and his so-called laws came into play. First, the accidental impact. Likely a random bit of orbital debris. Small enough to get past our normal defence for such things, but fast enough to do damage. Second, we were in orbit above a moon that was made of little more than ice, rock and wind. Third, my entire crew and I are reptilian. Not exactly in the purview of those laws, but it helps enforce the point of them. We would not survive for long down on that moon, and that is where we were headed. We scanned for quite a distance around our projected crash site looking for any sign of hope. Perhaps a cave where we could set up a heater and wait for rescue. Near the very edge of our scanning range, towards the upper pole of the moon, there was a blip. A small atmospheric research station. Was it currently occupied? Was there any chance that there was someone there to help? Not likely, but we directed our hope of survival at that blip, and sent a general distress signal to it. The crash, when it did happen, was harsh. We bounced along the surface of the moon, digging out craters along a great distance. The entire bottom of the ship was nearly peeled off by the time we came to a stop. Our main power supply was failing rapidly, as the engines were leaking everywhere that could be leaked from them. Our little survival heater wouldn't last until the sun went down on that. All the same, the eight of us huddled around it, and hoped that our signal had found someone in that tiny station. The wind was a constant presence, moaning through the new holes in our ship, and stealing away almost all of the heat from even the smallest gap in our little circle around that heater. Time passed, and a few of the crew fell unconscious as the heater started to lose power. With every heartbeat, it felt a little more hopeless. I'm not sure when I fell unconscious, but the next thing I knew I was being jostled awake. The regular cadence of bipedal footfalls seemed to be underneath me. Hey, hey, wake up. You need to wake up. The auto-translator picked up the language easy enough, but I had never heard that deep of a voice before. Who? I managed to croak out. My name is Brian. I'm a human researcher from Earth. I was assigned to the atmospheric station on this moon. I picked up your distress signal and set out. If I had known you were reptiles, it would have been much faster. It was then I realised where I was. I was zipped into the human's outer clothing, between the human's inner clothes and the outermost layer. It was supporting my back legs and tail with crossed arms that I realised I was deliciously warm. For any reptilian species, a heater is a must on any journey. One can never know what temperature one might run into on an unknown world or in a survival situation. But this human, simply by being human, was like the highest grade heater set to the absolute perfect setting. What about my crew? I asked, genuinely worried. They'll be fine. I have a covered trailer on my snow machine with a heater on it. It seemed a good thing to bring along for any survivors of a crash on this ice cube. I loaded your crew up as quickly as I could while I started to warm you up. I wanted to wake you up first, as you have an officer's uniform, Brian said, very rapidly. Well, Brian, it seems I owe you my life, as does my crew. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm not looking for a life debt. I was in a position to help, and I did. So, would you like to ride back with your crew and help them wake up, or would you like to stay where you are? I'll ride with my crew, thanks. It took three full weeks, by Brian's count, for our rescue ship to arrive. All the time we enjoyed his hospitality in that small station. I learned from my new friend that my kind, the Ulcid, are apparently the exact size, shape and look of a lesser animal from the human homeworld called an iguana. But with different eyes, as my friend puts it. We talked about this, that and the other. Sometimes nothing at all. My entire crew and I privately swore that our next male offspring will be named after this human. Humans. Such strange aliens. For a deaf world species, they certainly have an inborn capacity for unflinching kindness and generosity.